All right, today we'll be testing core isolation or memory integrity in Windows 11. So if you are not sure what that is, uh, you can press the start menu. You can start typing core isolation. You'll get to system settings over here. It'll open up this uh, screen here. So we just want to show the performance difference between memory integrity being on versus off. So memory integrity, according to Microsoft, prevents attacks from inserting malicious code into high security processes. Uh, Windows 10 did not have this feature. So this is pretty much where the performance difference between Windows 10 and Windows 11 comes in. Uh, you can manually disable this. I suggest you do if you don't visit dodgy sites or download dodgy files. It's always been known that the performance impact is quite huge, uh, but today I'm testing it to see if uh, that holds true. So the games we'll be testing today is Counter-Strike Global Offensive. We've got Formula One 2020. I've got uh, Cyberpunk 2077 and Fortnite. Now I'm playing at pretty low settings. I'm playing at 1080p medium on an RTX 3080 with a 12700K CPU paired with the DDR4 3600 megahertz CL18 memory and the board I've got is an Asus Z690 D4 motherboard. We've got resizable bar enabled and no overclocking. All right, uh, but that's it for the intro. Let's get right into it. Now, I'm not going to be talking throughout the whole benchmark video here. What you can see then, top left hand corner once again, well, top left hand corner of both screens, uh, we've got our MSI Afterburner RTSS uh, stats. And uh, what I want you to look out for is the GPU usage as well as the frame rate. You'll see that uh, on the left with core isolation off, we've got a little bit of a higher GPU usage which results in a higher frame rate. Unfortunately I did not record the 1% and 0.1% lows for Counter-Strike. Not entirely sure why I forgot to do that but uh, at the end of the Counter-Strike benchmark you'll see in the console the averages and uh, core isolation off actually has uh, about 50 frames per second more on average. Then the rest of the games we've got uh, all the goodies, the 1% and the 0.1% lows as well. I'm not going to explain everything, but uh, once again, just have a look at the GPU usage, the power draw and the frame rate. Now, just a note, I am recording on the same PC on where the benchmarks are running on, and uh, that does impact the frame rate a little bit. So if you're wondering why you get a higher frame rates with a similar system, that is the reason why. But uh, the results are still accurate as it just shows the differences between the settings of uh, core isolation on versus off. And just like that, we've got a nice 45 frames per second boost. Now when it comes to Fortnite, I actually loaded up a replay of one of the games that I won. Still not entirely sure how I did it, but uh, there you have it. Uh, I, I did a replay because uh, obviously Fortnite does not have a built-in benchmark. And uh, yeah, you can actually see that there's a very big difference between the core isolation off versus uh, on in the 1% and the 0.1% lows. The average frame rate also increased quite a bit with it off, but I think the biggest difference you'll notice in Fortnite is the 1% and the 0.1% lows. Right here you can see we had about 40 frames per second increase in the average and the 1% lows increased substantially. Now for Cyberpunk, I've also run the benchmark at uh, 1080p medium. Now the medium preset actually enables FSR on uh, auto and at 1080p medium, FSR is then set to quality and that helps us to enforce a CPU bottleneck. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, core isolation on versus off really doesn't make a difference when you are GPU bound. So I just uh, forced uh, CPU bound scenarios to show you the biggest differences between the two. The biggest difference in Cyberpunk actually comes in the form of the GPU usage. You'll see that uh, we are constantly uh, in the 90s on the left and uh, definitely in the low 70s uh, up until the 80s uh, on the right. And that's obviously where the performance gains uh, come from within Cyberpunk. Then getting towards the end of uh, Cyberpunk benchmark, we had a very nice uh, 25 frames per second increase in the average frame rate. 
Now F1 2020 actually shows us some of the biggest differences we've uh, seen during our testing uh, but that's basically just because the frame rates are ridiculously high so uh, 30 frames per second boost amounts to about uh, 10% but it's still a 10% gain by just toggling a single switch within Windows. Now this is actually a very long benchmark run so I'm just going to cut to the end. And we are nearing the end of our benchmark runs here. As you can see, overall we got about a 10% uh, increase across all our games. And I think that's actually a very nice increase. It's definitely worth it to experiment on your own system to see whether you'll be getting the same gains. As it is very easy to enable and disable this feature. Alright, uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And as always, we hope to see you in the next one.